we'll just talk about whatever. Snyder Cut. Yeah. Snyder yeah. Cut. yeah. Beep, beep, beep. yeah. No one, like, I don't really care. No, <laughs> look, it's going to be trash, but at least it'll be the trash it was intended to be. That's, <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay, should we start? Yeah. All right. Welcome to the Tuesday Review. I am James. I'm Nathan. And I'm Callum. And we're joined tonight by Alum. Uh, thank you for having me across the internet. Across the interwebs. We are... The vast uh, divide. Recording in isolation. And yeah... First things for, I mean, last week we didn't know, like, it was only supposed to be a short test of the online recording thingy. Yeah. And we ended up talking, you know, ranting for so long, so that we decided to make it a whole episode. But, um, yeah, so we didn't actually sort of talk about where we're at with the show and, you know, what's what's been going on. So we thought we'd take this episode to let listeners know, you know, what's going on and... And, you know, apologize because I, I'm sorry to everyone who... Was listening. <laughs> yeah, was listening. And then, like, you know, we kind of left them at the time they needed us most. <laughs> so, <laughs> apologies to listeners but Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure there was a people out there who were like, what movies do Nick Beards hate? <laughs> Specifically. Yeah, like, what, what, yeah, it's like, where else am I supposed to get my Star Wars nerd rage from? Because I, I need the opinions of cis white men talking to yeah. me about movies. That's in demand right now. Yeah, exactly. We need another pop culture podcast from a bunch of straight white guys. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, apologies to listeners for just, like, leaving. But um, shit's been really crazy, uh, as everyone as everyone knows, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, I hope everyone's okay. And sorry we left you. And, you know, I hope you're doing all right and staying safe. But yeah, it's just been really nuts. Um, I got a new job, and so I was kind of in between jobs, like getting ready for my new job, and then this coronavirus shit happened, and you know, then we went to lockdown, and so I had to, you know, move from the office that I was moving into back to home, and it was all this crazy stuff. And so, you know, we weren't really sure if we were going to be able to continue the show, for you know, when we were going to be able to continue it. And then, you know, of course, because the world sucks, you know, Nathan and Callum being, you know, retail boys, you know, had to work three times as hard yeah. d- during during a time the pandemic. Where, yeah, during a time where you could literally die just from going to work. And of course, no one cares. Um, of course, listeners probably, you know, have, are in the same boat as us. But anyway, my, my point is... There like, wasn't a lot of time um, to, to organize things with, with yeah. um, the place and, we were at, the studio we were using, yeah. you know, lots of logistical concerns for everybody. Exactly, mm-hmm. yeah. And and the other thing was that, like, things are just still in a state of flux because now they're talking, yeah. about, they're talking about reopening things. You know, I'm looking to move back into the office that I was originally at and yada, yada, yada. And then just today we find out there's more outbreaks. So we don't, uh, you know, there's, yeah. an antici- there's an implied anticipation that maybe we'll go back to a, a later stage of lockdown. Yeah, exactly. If they don't get it under control. So who knows what's going yeah. on. So, yeah, just we appreciate, you know, the listeners out there and just bear with us while we're in this kind of weird flux In stage. between moment. We, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like we were forced to take a bit of a break. Um, but yeah. we're working on getting a new rhythm and a new routine for well, recording. That's that's another yeah. That's another thing is like we were kind of you know when we were still at the studio, we were still working out. We were just kind of getting into a groove of like what made the show good, which yeah. which we we thought was just like reviewing one movie and then that's it. You know, like because we used to do like news and then little reviews and then mm. and then we we're kind of like that's not really working. And then we're like, all right, so, and then the last few episodes before we had to stop were just like reviews of one movie. And I think those worked out pretty well. Yeah. And then, then we had to stop. And so now we're back to whole, like the short episodes and like the news and stuff. And we've missed so much news, obviously, because we haven't been talking. But I think one of the things we discovered doing the show was sometimes it's just because now with the internet like it's on it's on people's phones you open your phone yeah. you've got the article that you know this movie's coming out or this director did this or whatever and it's like you don't need us to talk about it of course that's not why people listen they want to hear us talk about it but um yeah it's just like it's like what we were just kind of trying to figure out what's worth talking about 
Yeah, because there's always so much to talk about. And yeah. We only, at least when we were at the studio, even though our shows do tend to go for a lot longer than they did when we started, mm. we still only have a certain time frame to yeah. work with. Yeah. So like even now, like we're not exactly sure. You know, when we won't we won't be uploading every week. Maybe every couple of weeks, maybe once a month. We're not sure what we're going to be reviewing or whatever, especially with the the cinemas shut and stuff. No, they're uh, yeah, opening I, soon. Well, I they, think, they, yeah, say so they, they say they're opening soon, but nothing's scheduled to be released soon except for Tenet, which is definitely going to get delayed. Uh, I'm just hoping they uh, they just show older films, to be honest. Yeah, but I, I personally, as much as I love older films and want to support, you know, and go and see them, I don't really want to risk getting fucking COVID <laughs> to see. I'll take I'll take a risk. <laughs> All right. You, 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 yeah, you, no, no, no. Dep- depends what movies they're showing. Yeah, it, it depends. <laughs> yeah. It depends on the movie. It depends. <laughs> I assume they're gonna only let a few people in, so it's like there's like three, two or three seats between people. Um, but you yeah, know, like like I keep saying, it's all a state of flux. You know, we don't yeah. know what's going on. We don't know what we're gonna be talking about on the show. Um, we don't know. The, the the format of the show had to change because of this format change rule, you know, the way we record yeah, yeah, yeah. it. So, yeah. yeah, so I just, you know, wanted to say... We, bear with we, us. Yeah, bear with us for a bit and, you know, we're, 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 still, we're, still, we're still around, we'll still upload occasionally. Um, it just might be a bit different from now on. And and we're not, you know, we're also not sure, you know, when if the lockdown completely ends and everything starts going back to normal, you know, we, yeah, it's, the, things will start changing. Then we might not, we might do something different with the show after that. So, yeah, bear with us for a while. I know this is some, you know, boring stuff, but I thought we'll get out of the way at the top of the show. Just some housekeeping, let people know where we're at, and you know, thanks, thanks for bearing with us, and and thanks for continuing to listen. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, um, and then we can talk about whatever you guys want is just a fun just something I thought was funny and is in our wheelhouse is uh the Rise of Skywalker Blu-ray was released on April 1st. <laughs> and well it's ironic not ironic but it's I should say fitting because the yeah, movie's a joke. Yeah, exactly. So I was like surely someone knew, right? Surely <laughs> surely surely there was an executive who did it on purpose or something because there's no, no way like it wasn't. It wasn't a special day or anything. It was like a Wednesday, so it's not like they were releasing it on a weekend, so everyone could go buy it. It was just like I, I just thought that was funny. Like surely that had to. That can't be coincidence. Um, no. Yeah. So I just thought that was funny. I'd mention that. Um, um, well, I mean, I guess to start with, we can talk about something that's quite recent. The um, the strange. We'll call it the strange tale of HBO Max in Australia. Mm-hmm. So, uh, for listeners that aren't aware or might need some catching up, let's, let's stop by saying, uh, "Fuck Rupert Murdoch and fuck Foxtel." Oh yeah, fuck yeah, Foxtel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've talked about a lot on the show. Foxtel is a dinosaur that should have died years ago. Uh, yeah, you mean it. Rupert Murdoch's a <laughs> yeah. dinosaur that should have died years ago? Oh, also, yeah, also that. <laughs> Eat the rich. He's a public figure. It's allowed. <laughs> no, that's right. So, also, so, I think he's also aware of how much generally people hate him. Oh, he's he's pure evil. Like, yeah. you know, he, you know, he can't cry about anything. You know, a bunch of nerds talk about yeah, him. He's he used to it. cry about it. Anyway, go on, Nathan. So basically, to catch the listeners up, HBO Max is uh, HBO and War- specifically, we'll say Warner, who owns HBO. Yeah has decided to throw their hat in the ring and try to compete with Netflix for the, yeah, the lucrative we, streaming market. I'm pretty sure we talked about it uh, a while yeah. ago, you know, with the Disney When Plus it was announced, stuff. yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, announced. This, and, uh... this is just a quick catch-up. So, move forward to current day, and HBO Max has launched, featuring, you know, the vast majority of Warner's library and the entirety of HBO. Yeah. And curiously, on the same day, a new streaming service in Australia has launched. Which I will know... Technically I... owned... Technically owned by Foxtel. Yeah. But I will cool. say, it just kind of fit out of nowhere. There was no marketing. Very little yeah. marketing. Very little yeah, advertising. And, and this is why it's interest. This part of why it's interesting. So, out of nowhere, we get a new streaming service called Binge. B-I-N-G-E. You know, uh, yeah. as binging content or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's, it sounds like kind of a lazy name. Something yeah. they threw together quite quickly. It sounds like one of those uh, free streaming services. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, basically... Um, 
here's what I think's happened. Putting on my tinfoil hat, but not really tinfoil yeah. hat, because it's kind of obvious. No, yeah. Um, I think HBO has said to Foxtel, Hiruva Murdoch, whoever's in charge of Foxtel, he said, look, this is our vision for our content in the future. If you can't match this in the way that we like it, that's fine. But then once the, our lease agreements or contract agreements for our yeah. content is up, we're not renewing them. And, you know, or we're going to build our own service, which yeah. will directly yeah. compete with you. All our exactly. stuff is going to be pulled from Foxtel. Yeah, yeah, and we'll launch HBO Max here like we are doing in most of yeah. the world. Because yeah. most other countries are getting legitimate HBO Max. Yeah. Uh, in the countries where we don't, they don't have a, a similar situation like we do with Foxtel and other license negotiations. Um, and so, curiously, on the same day that HBO Max launches, we get Binge, which it's with no advertising, a very lazy sort of... Like, the, the actual app is nice. It's based on existing yeah. architecture that Foxtel has used yeah. uh, for a service called KO. So the technology, it runs well, mostly, and, it, and it's quite nice. But you can tell that it's rushed... Mm. Yeah, you can. So I wonder if behind the scenes there was a bit of a, not a power struggle, but a bit of Foxtel dragging its feet. As almost yeah. as if they were dragged kicking and screaming and you to know they a were. reasonable streaming market. Yeah, it, it, that, that, that seems the most likely scenario because we talked about how Foxtel is so far behind, so ancient. Well, in well I mean, of... it, it, it also makes sense because we know that Foxtel, uh, they, they obtain the rights to properties... But for some reason, they don't always make full yeah, use of the properties. For example, mean. Arrested Development. Exactly, yeah. And, and, and other, like, you know, it's one of those things where on, like, if you have, like, a Foxtel app, for example, they might have certain seasons of The Sopranos, but they might lack a, uh, you know, a season yeah. here or there, of or any show, really. Yeah. So they're not, Foxtel wasn't designed with, like, the binge modern streaming mentality in mind. Yeah, and uh, I think the reason it's been that way for so long is the majority of um, Foxtel users are primarily in the older range. Not to say all of them are, mm. but certainly I would say their base is yeah. probably forty plus, mm. and they they probably they don't care. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I uh, um, I, th- I think that we we must have talked about this, but I think a lot of people who have Foxtel is just because they've always had it and they just yeah. always pay for it, and so it's, it's like. like they treat it like taxes, basically. Yeah, almost. Yeah, it's just it's just like a phone bill. It's just there. Yeah. You just pay it. You pay it because you have to. Like, yeah, yeah, it's like in it's installed in your house anyway. You might as well keep paying it. Um, but we we always argued that you know because the the way people watch things has changed and Netflix you know and streaming have changed the game. You know, Foxtel was so ancient and they should just abandon all that and just go straight into the streaming. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, and we would we would be happy to pay for it. Yeah, and it seems that the only reason they've finally sort of done that is because they were threatened. <laughs> is because potentially we're not sure, but you know Nathan's probably right that HBO was like, "Look, we're going to release HBO Max here if you don't do something." Well, I mean, put yourself in the shoes of the poor HBO executive that has to deal with the Australian agreements. <laughs> yeah. Like that poor bastard, whether they're a man or a woman, that poor person yeah. who has to deal with Australia's national culture of complacency, because that's what it is. You're yeah. talking to a company who basically wants nothing to do with modern streaming habits. Yeah. And, uh, has and, basically, and, and HBO uh, has plans, you yeah. know, and they're stalled. And has, I think, you know, the, this brings up a good point that I haven't thought of. Like in Australia, HBO shows especially Game of Thrones, were the most pirated yeah. e- ever, like anywhere ever. Yeah. Um, you'd think HBO and Warner, you know, being the parent company, would, you'd, you know, go to Foxtel and be like, this is a problem because you guys aren't providing a f- affordable uh, working service. That's right. But as we talk about every time we talk about this topic, it's a bunch of old white guys who don't know what the fuck they're doing, who don't know anything about the internet who exactly. just bl- who blame the pirates who blame yeah exactly who, you know, it's, it's the bludgers who don't want to pay yeah. and what happened was exactly what we said would happen was as soon as binge dropped you guys paid for it and oh you know technically i'm still on a two-week free trial yeah yeah but, but i was you, saying you to know. nathan before <laughs> we were talking to one of our we were talking about it in a big group chat mm. and i was i was telling uh, our friends about it and one of our mutual friends uh christian uh, who's one of the producers of uh, Sunrise Arcade, um, 
uh, starts deriding me, you know, to yeah. calling me a shill. And I was saying to Nathan, he doesn't realize that because, like us, uh, he occasionally flies over to America to use Hulu. Yeah. And uh, But he doesn't realize we're in a desert for content. People people don't realize that because we have Stan and Netflix. But And, of course, people like us, for example, like I said, will fly to foreign countries to uh, yeah. legally watch content. Mm. But we don't have that in Australia. Not, not officially, not legitimately. No. Yeah. So when something like this does happen, I think it's important to let people know. Yeah. Like, so especially people in case can of... use the services. Yeah. Because yeah, if, especially... if nobody uses the services, what's to say they'll stick around if they're operating at a loss? Yeah. Um, especially in cases like this where, unfortunately, Foxtel seem to have done it just to feel, fulfill obligations with HBO and Warner. Yeah, exactly. Because mm. where's the advertising for Binge? No, it's did, you, did, yeah. did you know it existed, James, before we, no. we discussed it yesterday? I, I saw an article headline that said something about Foxtel is planning a new streaming service yeah. or something to that effect. And then the, the next day, Callum was like, have you heard of Binge? And I said, what's that? Yeah. Like, no, I so didn't know what it was like, called, you know. They, it's, it's, almost, it's ironic because... There's no ads on TV. It seems like they're phoning it in. Yeah, yeah they are But they might have... Which... They might have accidentally made one of the best products on the market. So yeah. here's here's a deeper level to my conspiracy. Yeah. Mm. So Foxtel is has a vested interest in not having a streaming platform that works because they just want people to sign up to their expensive cable solutions. Exactly. So their it's their approach is well we have to do it the right way to appease Warner and maintain our. Um, business relationship with them, yeah. But we don't want it to popular, or we don't want to advertise it too much, so it takes subscribers it, away from. Yes, yeah. So that we have a problem where our base is divided, uh, is divided, or our base yeah. no longer seem but, like our sort of our our idea of our the idea of our base. Sorry, yeah. Is now is no longer overpriced cable subscription. But, you know, we've talked about it before. It's inevitable. They're gonna have. They're gonna have to. Well, some Watch interesting things, yeah. Some interesting things about Binge is there's no subtitles for some reason. Yeah, that's, um, that, apparently and, that's fo- one of Foxtel's biggest issues. Though. Yeah, <laughs> and there's also no 4K, and apparently that's because uh, the Foxtel company says if people want 4K, they're going to have to have Foxtel. Yeah. So it's one of those situations where they're giving you something, yeah. but they're saying if you want 4K, you have to have what we consider to be the Superior product, service, yeah. yeah. Which is, of course, you know, so, in in yeah. our opinion, Foxtel's probably the inferior service. So yeah, exactly. So they're doing the thing that you'd expect them to do, which is to half-ass it and then pretend yeah. like. But at know, the end of the day, whether they like it or not, they're still fulfilling those those obligations, yeah. which provides us with, in my opinion, and I, you know, I'm not. This is not a this ad. This show is not a sponsorship for binge at any no. at any level. No. I still think it's one of the better platforms on the market now, yeah. just because well, they have to have that content. Exactly, and that that was what I was going to say is the content because it's like all the HBO back catalog, you know, all, yeah. the, all the big Warner Brothers box blockbuster movies and including they the have, DC um, movies. Yeah, and what surprised me is they have like the lesser known stuff, like they have Carnival. Yeah. Um, they all the have old stuff. They have like all these Sopranos, The Wire, The Newsroom, all that good stuff. Yeah. But then they also get weekly episodes of Last Week Tonight. Mm. Like they get, they seem to be getting new episodes as they air, in, well, or uploaded to streaming, I should say. Yeah. Um, and for some reason, Binge also chucked in uh, live Foxtel channels hmm, without a channel guide. So yeah. this re- this leads me to my personal conspiracy theory about Binge, which is it's essentially based off the Hulu model. Uh, yeah. Now, Hulu in America didn't start off with live TV. They came to that point after a number of years, I believe. Mm. And the UI is very, it seems to me, to be inspired by Hulu. And I'm not, I'm wondering if Binge is successful, Foxtel might, um, you know, uh, hesitantly funnel more resources into it and actually have an optional Foxtel well, light subscription built well, into it, much like Hulu. Yeah. That that that's that's what I'm kind of waiting because I haven't I haven't subscribed yet because one there's no console support which is where I watch most that's, of my that's stuff. That's that's yeah. Isn't that the most boomer thing you've ever heard? Yeah, which is boomer as fuck. Um, <laughs> and two, two, it's I'm just kind of seeing where they're going with it. Are they yeah. are they going to try to deliberately tank it? Are they going to string it along for a while until and then let it die? Yeah, let it die. Yeah, I, you know, I think are, their vest their vested interest. 
is for it not to do well. So they yeah. can turn out to Warner and say, oh, the Australian public doesn't want it. Sorry, you back know, to cable. Here we yeah. go. You know, there's a lot of great content on it now. But yeah. what ha- what happens when the world opens back up, you know, after pandemic, and they all of a sudden go, oh, all the new HBO shows are coming out, but not to binge, just to Foxtel. Oh, cable. I would get so mad. And then in, you know, six months, we'll start releasing them week to week on binge, you know, stuff like that. So we, and that that's the case where I drop my subscription and yeah. I say, well, I'll go elsewhere, thank you. So so I'm yeah. waiting I'm waiting to see if they improve, you know, the the, the actual physical app, um, you know, the software or whatever, and console support. I'm seeing as what happens with the content because at the moment I'm caught up on all my HBO shows, and there's going to be at least two years because of the lockdown until. Th- things start to get back into production well the one thing i will say about binge they have some movies i haven't seen on streaming services before uh some some a bit i wouldn't i would use the term rarer only because you don't see them all the time but they have movies like presumed innocence um they have mandy yeah uh, a whole bunch of like movies which i haven't seen on on other services well but that's that's the thing we always talk about is there's a lot of great stuff on foxtel because they grab up the rights but the problem is they overcharge for it and it's on a crappy yeah. cable, you know, s- servers. So, you know, binge is the perfect thing. But like I said, at the moment, I'm not willing to give them one yeah. red cent until they can prove that they're, you know, doing they're the right about thing. It. Yeah, it, is, it, about it. it is still early days. I think it's this is the second day in binge's existence. Yeah. So I don't want to be too harsh on it. Yeah, yet. I, we'll, we'll see. It'll be... It'll at be... the same... At the same time, though, Foxtel, the company, has garnered a lot of negativity, and they yeah. deserve oh. it. Yeah. Oh, so, oh definitely. So. I, you know, even if Binge is great, I'm still not going to, you know, I'm, we're still going to sh- trash talk Foxtel because it's trash. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, like... But, yeah, uh, check it out if you're interested. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, you know, it's, it's we'll always... We'll keep you updated. Yeah, every time we talk about this topic, it's like it's always an evolving thing. Like, we're... We're in the streaming wars, remember, you know, like I always yeah. say. We're right in yeah, the middle of right. the streaming wars. Um, but that, that also, this also kind of ties into my point of what I said at the start of the show, where this news, you know, we always talk about the news, but it's like it's always an evolving thing. So I feel like yeah. we're always behind no matter what we talk about. Um, and yeah. by, the, by the time I edit up and upload this, it'll probably be another week, you know, from when we actually record it. So I always feel like we're behind, which is why I like to stick to the the reviews, the reviews. and the, the analysis yeah. and stuff. Um, you know, because now we're in lockdown or you know coming out of it, and you know I've been binging so many TV shows, watching so many movies, playing so many video games. It's like I want to talk about them, but also like one of the problems we had, you know, in the earlier episodes of Choose Their Review and in you know back even in the Man vs Movies days was just like the little discussion fluff pieces that really didn't go anywhere and that, that didn't have room to breathe. Yeah. Um, you know, and like, because I always want to talk about the video games I've been playing, but, you know, you guys haven't played the same games I have. And, you know, you know, then Nathan's, you know, and Alum are, are doing Sunrise Arcade where they talk about games at length. And it's like, it doesn't, it, we, we really never got a good rhythm of like, yeah, yeah, diverse, yeah. diverse content and such. Yeah, you know, like, so, uh, yeah, it's it's hard to explain, but, uh, you know, I, yeah. I, I always I always want to talk about it. It's one of the reasons I started my Instagram channel, Drifter, was because I was like, there's so many movies that I want to talk about, but we just don't have time to talk about on the show. And, you know, if I mention them, you know, Nathan and Callum haven't seen them, and then I'm just kind of talking at them. And it's like, how much can I really say without spoiling it and, you know, without taking up the yeah. whole show? But even my Instagram now, I'm kind of getting bored of it. And I'm like, it's not really a good place to express reviews. You know, my reviews are really short and just, you know, yeah. lame. Um, so, and, and I, don't, I don't talk about all the TV shows I watch on there because I thought that would be too much. So now I'm kind of thinking, well, you know, what, what am I, you know, what, should I stop mm. doing that? It's it's you know it's it's like like I said at the start of the show it's like a state of flux I don't know really know where we're going. Um, well, you know I know this is another sort of a catch up episode. Uh, we're yeah. just sort of explaining what's going on. Uh, maybe the next episode we'll try and focus on something specific and see well, how well we can do. That's you that's know, what remote... that's what, that's what I was going to say. This episode is just the catch up kind of housekeeping, you know, quick discussions. Yeah. You know, 
But uh, yeah, you know, we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll maybe pick a movie or you know. Well, the good thing, even though we we're in lockdown, um, the good thing is we have invested in our own home theater. So if we ever decide to review any movie, whether we download it or we watch a 4K or a Blu-ray, uh, we can still review movies without having to go to the cinema. They might just not be the newest films, but we could yeah. always review well, movies that people haven't necessarily seen. Well, well, I th- I think the thing is, is like. As far as we know, not a lot of new movies are going to come out the, yeah. at the cinema for at least a few more months. So, you know, we won't, we won't have to be worried, I think, about, you know, falling behind in that regard. Yeah. But, yeah, like, I think, yeah, if, like I said, I think we'll kind of go back to, to reviewing just one movie at a time. Yeah. And, you know, not talking about, you know, even though I'm always, you know, playing games and watching TV shows and watching movies... It's just it's too hard to talk about it, and it's not really it's not really fun yeah. for me to just ramble while you guys sit around and you guys play different games than I do, and you know yeah. watch different shows. Mm. And so I think yeah, like the the show will obviously keep changing, but yeah, we're still going to be here. There's always something to talk about. Um, yeah. And I think that if you if you are a listener, you know that uh, we always try to give fair assessments of whatever we talk about. So. There, as far as I'm concerned, there's always a reason to record. So yeah. we're, as far as I, you know, as I'm concerned, we're always going to be here for our listeners, um, no matter what form that takes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, the world's our oyster, frankly. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we can talk shit about anything. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> but my, we my, find it so difficult. <laughs> yeah, but my point is, is like, there are, there's so many things I want to talk about, but, you know, what... What's really worth talking about? What what makes good content of the show, and what's not going to be old news as soon as we talk about it, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, like that's I, the I, hard part. I still wanted to talk about Death Stranding. You know, make a second, you know, uh, episode to that, and I don't, you know, no one ever played it, and then I was kind of like, ah, oh, and, and it became. Hey, like I expressed my news. dislike straight up. Yeah, but like Callum never finished it. Alum never played it. You know, like so. <laughs> you know, it was just that kind yeah, of. Yeah, I thing never finished of, it. Exactly. So you know, there are so many things that I wanted to do, but, you know, it, it doesn't work yeah. out that way, so... Yeah. One thing so, I'll say, James, is if you yeah. want to talk about something, mm. um, like, I'm always down to just hop on clean feed and have a chat. You know what I mean? Um, the one benefit we have mm. is we don't have to go to the studio. Yeah. So, if, if you're at home and there's yeah. something... If you message me, like, so I've got leave coming up mm. for just two weeks, yeah. but if, if I'm at... Even if I'm not... Even if I've got work, if you're yeah. like, hey, there's this movie on pinch or netflix or whatever yeah you know do you want to talk about it we can watch it and then we can just talk about it the next day or whatever yeah we, yeah, we could like, do just a series of my micro reviews yeah like if yeah. you want to talk about something yeah. I, I can always watch no, it or read up on I, I it think, and then we can just hop on here and have a chat yeah no the, i think more, the point i was trying to make was it, it, it's hard to explain it's like me saying hey callum have you seen uh, x french movie from 1958 <laughs> you know, like, and you're going to, of course not. And then to me... You, oh, but I could watch it. Like, yeah, and then you know. I could say, oh, you should watch it. And then eventually you might get around to watching it. And then it's like, then we feel obligated to talk about it. You know, we're... No, it, but I mean, if you want to talk, I'll watch something to talk no, about no, no, with you. No, but that's what I'm saying is, it's like, I feel like... Uh, it's, 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 it's hard to explain. I feel like I want to talk about it because that's what I like to do. That's what we like to do. But... As content for a show, I don't think yeah. it's right. No, I know what you mean. So Especially when we're nerd focused. Yeah. Fantasy and sci fi is like our niche. Yeah, so that's why I think from now on, like, you know, we won't talk about video games as much. We won't talk about uh, a lot of TV shows, you know, that we've been watching yeah. unless we're reviewing a season. You yeah. know what oh. I mean? Yeah, I watched, um, <laughs> I watched on Netflix recently The Wrong Messy with David Spade. Why do you even bother? <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I saw and David Spade Netflix, I was like, no thanks. And man, it was terrible. It was yeah. absolute garbage. I don't know. And what... usually, usually I'm a defender of these shows. Yeah, I don't know what you expect. <laughs> I don't know. To what be you fair, expect. not all of them are bad. Um, That's what, uh, yeah. Uh, what is it? What was that one with Chris Rock in it? That was actually a really take, good one. I'll take your word for it, Gal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh god. But yeah, if you have something specific you want to talk about, um, no, no, we can always make arrangements. It's not that. It's just like you know, I watch so much stuff, and it'd be cool. It, in a in a perfect world, 
I would have a a YouTube channel or I would have a podcast where it's just like I upload constantly. Yeah. But I I honestly don't understand how YouTubers and podcasters do that all the time. Because this, this episode alone will take me oh, th- three the, hours well, to edit. The more popular ones are uh, high out there in editing team. That's, that's true, yeah. But uh, like just um, the, guy, like, yeah. the guys who have their own YouTube channel, like that's crazy. Like they, they who constantly upload. Like they put us so much work into that. Yeah, they do. Um, uh, oh, one, thing I'll, one thing I'll mention uh, in terms of video games, and then we won't really do video games much anymore, is uh, Cyberpunk 2077 surprisingly not banned in Australia despite its content. Allegedly, no cuts. Yeah. <sighs> well, that's so, the best news I've heard all day. Yeah, like that's. I just had to mention that. It's like we, you know, we've been talking about Cyberpunk a lot on the show. I don't think we'll be able to review it in any, you know, proper way. Like I've just been talking about. No, it's not a thing we can really review anymore. Video games, TV shows, we can't review them much anymore on the show. But I think oh, I had to mention that. I was just yeah. like, huh? What? The what game everybody's this? been waiting for. Yeah. And also the fact that Australia seems to be getting it uncensored. Which, we'll see. <laughs> which, you know, we'll see when it comes out. But um, I think, I know Alan want to talk about the Snyder Cut, but he's he's dropped out of the show. Yeah. Um, oh, look, I mean, but, I'm, I didn't, as, you know, everyone knows, yeah. um, as most comic book fans, I'm assuming, who enjoy the feel of the comics didn't necessarily enjoy the movies. A- a- um, any anyone who enjoys good movies <laughs> doesn't. Well, <laughs> not just com- not just the comics. Yeah, uh, that's right. You know, uh, if um, you have ta- if you have taste. <laughs> I yeah. So I don't think the Snyder Cut will no. be good. Look, I I think if what I've heard is true, and yeah. and that it's uh two thirds of the movie are different. Mm. Uh, I think it'll be interesting. Look. Just to see as an exercise, yeah. Um, how Snyder differs I, from uh, yeah, Howard? So, uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, oh, was it Whedon? Uh, Whedon, just Whedon. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So I have no fe- like intention to watch it. I have no f- feeling, you know, to to want to watch it. I'm curious. I yeah. may, I may watch it. I think it's something if we did watch, we'd have to talk about on the show. Well, um, it's 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 also it's like an important follow up discussion. It's culturally yeah, exactly. relevant. And I I don't I don't remember our Justice League review. You know, it was positive, super James. well, but it was a hundred percent not <laughs> positive. I, and I remember that. But m- my my point is is like I don't remember exactly, but. I think I don't remember if we talked about the Snyder Cut at the time. I, I know we think, mentioned we mentioned yeah. it. I don't like. I think the Snyder Cut's a thing that's kind of like a meme. I don't oh, think that. that I, that's I, it. I, I knew we we knew that he'd filmed stuff, but yeah. I don't think it was one of those things that we ever thought was actually going to come out. No, it was just no. like a it'll be stayed so, in a vault. You yeah. Know. So we we knew his his cut was different. We knew he had a lot of different footage. Uh, you know, I, I questioned whether, you know, what, what that footage was and whether, you know, and, and it definitely, definitely would not have made the movie better because he's obviously proven that he can't make good DC movies. Yeah. But yeah, at the time it was just like, it was just like, you know, his cut of the movie didn't get, you know, he he didn't get to finish it. Um, and we didn't really think it was going to get made. Then it became a meme and people kept pushing for it, but I thought it was more as a joke. I know there yeah. are I know there are fans who legit want it, but the fact that they are finally releasing it, it's interesting. On one hand, I'm happy for it because it means that fans The companies or, are listening. Yeah, viewers have some sway at at least to a no, like I think it's less extent. to do with them having sway, it's more to do with DC showing that they're capable of understanding what consumers want. Yeah. So if but, you know, if they're pushed enough they're willing to make concessions, but don't. Yeah. I feel like we shouldn't fool ourselves into no. thinking this is entirely benevolent because there's that, absolutely going to be a financial incentive for them to do this. And that's what I was going to say: is on one hand, it's good that they they're kind of taking note of what what viewers want, but at, on the other hand, it's like they're not doing it for the right reasons. Yeah, and, that's right. And and because the Snyder cuts become such a meme. 
it's almost it's it's kind of like they're yeah, they're using it to further their own brand, not necessarily yeah, it, they release yeah, the cut of the movie it's, that it's they a, think is. It's a brand thing, and it's also a lot of people who didn't care about the movie like just got on board with the meme because yeah. for the for the lols. And I feel like that's a lot what what we're seeing now in politics, especially, but with movies as well, is just people get on board the joke, just to to. To troll, to 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 ride ride the the hype train to for the lols, and like oh, I think also that a lot of people uh, were disappointed with Justice League. Yeah, there were some people who liked it, mm. um, but a lot of people were disappointed. And I think that a lot some of those people looked at the Snyder cut as a kind of like a hidden gem that for some yeah. reason was being held back. And I think that a lot of these people are going to be set up for disappointment when the Snyder Cut doesn't oh. deliver what they imagine it's going to, Definitely. right? Because they think it's going to be some really intelligent, um, yeah. <laughs> even grittier <laughs> uh, take on the superheroes, <laughs> when that's not a good DC movie. No. Uh, if Snyder's, Snyder's original version was always going to be bad, the cut we, the original cut we got, the, the theatrical cut we got... Yeah was bad but that doesn't make his version any better no that's right like don't you, you can't the, the, um, ex- the example i i'll use is more more of a theoretical example but it's something i've mentioned before is jj abrams version of last jedi would have been much better than ryan johnson's but it still would have been trash. i mean yeah i mean rise of the skywalker uh well and then we saw what happens when jj abrams comes back so <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, you know what I mean? yeah that's right. Um, but that's what I equate it to. Is like just cuz it's different doesn't mean it's better just because the original guy gets to finish. I I will Callum you'll agree with me that to see bearded Superman in the black suit. Yeah, and the mullet. Like that's all yeah. I wanted. I, I knew the movie was going to be crap. Yeah, I don't remember if he had the mullet in in the uh Snyder cut. I can't remember. I, I doubt it. Um, um did, think, will he have a beard in the I Snyder think, cut? I think he had, I think he had stubble. From, uh, the, from the production photos, I, I saw. I mean, well, it depends but what it, kind of stuff we're talking. We'll see. But it, I bet it. I mean, Henry Cavill is like any any level of any from clean shaven to to lumberjack beard. Henry Cavill is like amazing looking. So yeah, <laughs> no, that's right. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, you know, it's an interesting development. It's especially because there are so many movies that people have been screaming for the director's cut or whatever, or the original yeah. cut. And I, we're just never going to get it. No, that's right. So for it'd this, be an interesting trend, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, but then again, like I said, the me the memeness of it, the the kind of for the lols, people aren't invested. People don't actually care. Do we actually yeah. want this? You know, and also it means in future. Re, remember in the two thousands where studios would make a shitty PG thirteen action movie, then they would release the unrated cut. On, yeah, on DVD, and it would just have some CGI blood, or, or maybe someone would be dubbed with the F word somewhere, you know. And I feel like this could be a situation where, because of streaming making it easier to release movies, they could just release the, you know, the director's version every time a new movie comes out to their streaming service. See, that's. I would say that would be okay if that wasn't the goal. If they just happen to make a movie and then that went to theaters but then when it came to streaming they were like here's the other cuts as extras yeah. that we decided weren't no, appropriate for but what, what, I, what i'm saying is that the other cuts yeah. that they're releasing aren't they'll make act- ones yeah yeah exactly aren't they'll actually- fabricate extra yeah, cuts exactly uh, exactly yeah. yeah they're not actually the director's intended version yeah it's know? just like edgier stuff to get people to to, to log on to the streaming service yeah to get more views or whatever yeah yeah um, do you guys want to mention anything else? No, I think about just about Justice League. No, yeah, no, just anything, anything at all. Oh well, I mean the the season three um, release date for Dark has been officially announced as uh, June twenty yeah. seven. Uh, July July twenty seven. Oh, yeah. Um, now, if listeners know, uh, I'm a big fan. Of, as listeners will know, I'm a big fan of Dark. Uh, although Nathan and James haven't seen the whole thing. I've been uh, waiting. Been, for yeah, the third the, season because they said it was the last season so I could just binge the three uh, yeah it's a, a trilogy as a, um, you know, yeah which is a fine I mean that'll be a good discussion to talk about because that's a, an amazing yeah. show um, well, so that's I mean, I'm anticipating that a lot yeah that, that, that might be something we could review 
Yeah, no, in, that'll be a proper a a discussion um, yeah. because uh, that's it's a it's thematically dense. Mm. Uh, so there's a lot of layers we can talk about. Mm. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I'm glad that wasn't delayed because I'm pretty yeah. sure they shot it back oh, to back. They, yeah, they would have filmed it a while ago. Uh, what else is there? There was um, uh, Tenet. Seems was Tenet delayed. Uh, they have There's a new trailer for it. Yeah, so they've been really holding on to that uh, July release date. Uh, they really don't want to get rid of it. But the closer we get, they're going to have to delay it. Like, America is not ready to reopen. The death toll is through the roof. Yeah, it's horrific. You know, so even if they're, they're released, you know, even if they're opening the cinemas here, I, yeah. you know, that's not an incentive for for the studio to, to... They're not going to make any money if they just release it here, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. Um, so, you know, it'll definitely get delayed, but I think, you know, Nolan and co. were just really hold, hoping, holding that out. It's disappointing for me because that's my most anticipated anticip- movie. Yeah. Yeah, and I really, I really wanted to see it in IMAX, but, um, you know, I'd yeah. rather feel safe going to the movie, you know. Yeah, that's right. So, um, you know, I'm happy, I'm happy if it's delayed. One thing I'm excited for is the 4K re-release of Top Gun. Uh, <laughs> and I, no, I saw a review, like, like a pre, a pre-review. Yeah. Uh, apparently, the audio mm. is incredible. The audio oh, quality has been imagine, very, yeah. very well remastered. Mm. Uh, and visually, it, lo- it looks great. So, mm. uh, I think that this is one of those. This downtime we're having right now mm. is a good time for re-releases. Oh yeah. Uh, so I'm really uh, looking I've forward been... to sinking my teeth into some some 4K remasters. You know. I've I've been like the prop. I mean, problem, quote unquote, because you know it is a, it is an is it isn't a problem. Is that being in lockdown just gives me more time to be on Amazon <laughs> buying Blu-rays. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I spend I spend more time buying Blu-rays than watching them. <laughs> and you're earning yeah. more money now too. Yeah, in my job, yeah. So I've got a bit more money now. So I'm just buying Blu-rays. Like I got stacks and stacks of Blu-rays in my room. I don't know where to put. I don't have room for. Um, <sighs> so th- I mean, there's always something to watch. There's so many TV shows I've been watching. Like, I, if I told you how many TV shows I watched in the last couple of months, you'd have a heart attack. Um, well, uh, I'm. I'm like, are we calling the police watching... for welfare checks soon? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been watching uh, Sense8, um, which oh, is yeah. old news now. Uh, you know, I'm sure. I really, are... I really liked it. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I really. Uh, liked it. I will have a discussion about that uh, when I finish the whole thing, mm. because my feelings are complicated. Yeah. Um, but I'm nearly finished season one because uh, work's been crazy lately. I haven't been. Yeah. As well as other things going on, I haven't been uh, able to watch it one, you know, to a night yeah. like I used to. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's definitely a show worth engaging with. Yeah, I. I um, I, but I, I think that the show does a very good job at promoting empathy. Mm. But I really feel like you have to watch it with a critical eye because I feel like there are massive flaws in it, which could have easily been avoided. That the kind of the Wachowski seem to lean into. Mm. I think like. I'm not going to say too much because I haven't finished it yet. Yeah. But I feel like there's things that they get away with because they're because it's made by the Wachowskis that if it was anyone else, Netflix would have sent them packing. Um, uh, oh, no, don't worry. I'll, I'll no, have examples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about when it. I, when I finished it because yeah, we'll for all I know, they're problems. For all I know, they're just season one problems and, you know, it gets adequately resolved. Yeah. further on down the line but yeah no um, I, I really liked it i i watched it when it came out and i really enjoyed it and it wasn't it wasn't really uh what do you call it like it wasn't a it was a it was a big show but not a big show like it wasn't yeah a, no it wasn't a really main it wasn't a stranger things show. yeah yeah exactly so i was kind of uh, the only uh, person who watched it and i do think it's worth engaging with though like i said I, it does oh, have te- a lot of it has a lot of good points Technically, it's brilliant as well. The locations, it's just yeah, the editing's amazing. well the editing, done. Yeah, fantastic. Um, but yeah, well, that's a that's an in-depth conversation for yeah, another time. But anyway, cause... my my yeah. the, my kind of uh, rambling was to kind of lead into my you know I've been binging show so many shows, haven't been able to talk about them, won't bother talking about them because there's no point. But I do remember when we did the sci-fi classic special. Uh, and we were talking with my dad about Star Trek Picard, yeah. and I was like, oh, when when I finish watching it, I'll let listeners know my take. 
Oh, now, okay. Now I finished watching it during the lockdown, so I didn't get to really talk about it. So if you follow us on social media, you'll have seen I create I, I made a GIF, an animated GIF of what I thought of the show, um, with Picard saying "unmitigated disaster." <laughs> it, it it is honestly one of the worst things I've ever seen in television. So I should avoid it? Avoid it at all costs. But everybody said it, it was is, good. No, no. It is... Callum, remember when you watched like two or three episodes of Discovery and couldn't stomach it anymore? Yeah, I know. I, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, so I, I am a person who hated Discovery with every fiber of my being, but stuck through the first season just just to see it out. Yeah. And it almost killed me. Picard is much the same. It gets worse as it goes along. Oh my god! Until until the final episode, where I wanted to shoot myself, and it's it's as bad as Discovery. It's just it's tra- It's complete trash. It's not Star Trek at all. Wow. And it's clear. I mean, it's been clear for a long time, especially with Discovery and the J.J. Abrams movie movies. It's very clear that the people who make the new Star Trek don't like or understand Star Trek. That's surprising. And, you know, I honestly didn't expect that reaction. Yeah, I thought you were going to give no. a mostly positive review. Well, you know, I was, I was, I was very wary because of new Star Trek. But I was like, no, no, it's set in the Prime Universe. You know, it's got, it's got Patrick Stewart back. You know, the, the, you know, they've got yeah. uh, Troy and and Riker back. You know, they're they're kind of trying to do something here. It's a more character driven show. And I was like, you know, I'll give them the, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. It's, it is Last Jedi, Star Trek Discovery, just dog shit. Just dumb. It's <laughs> dumb. It doesn't make sense. It's dumb. It's ugly. It's cynical. It's violent. It's mean. It's mean spirited. And wow. And it ties into the points we always talk about with Star Wars but is happening with Star Trek, is the people, it's all money-driven, it's brand recognition, the people who make these things don't actually care. Yeah. And it's really, really sad, and it really, really fucking hurts me that Star Wars and Star Trek, two of the greatest, most important sci-fi franchises, two of the greatest, most important pop culture franchises ever, have been reduced to cynical, ugly disgusting you know this shit that we're seeing now yeah and you know star wars uh, as we've talked about is truly dead star trek is now truly dead uh as we talked about stargate died a long time ago you know where are the good sci-fi big sci-fi franchises now yeah Yeah. crazy they ran hollywood ran them into the ground and not only did they ran them ran them into the ground they shat on them and then they blamed the fans yeah. And that's the worst part. If you criticize Star Wars, if you criticize Star Trek, you're a neckbeard, you're an incel, you're a, you're an alt-right Nazi. Yeah. And it's like it's insulting, you know? And it really hurts. They destroy they destroyed Star Wars, they destroyed Star Trek. Hey, hey, we might be incel Nazis. But what we say about Star Wars is still true. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. we made that. We made Jack. We made that joke before. <laughs> yeah. It, it do, it, that doesn't mean we're it's, wrong. It's too <laughs> You know. So yeah. anyway, uh, but I think that's because people don't understand. Like, yeah. Uh, we've talked about it so many times. Like yeah. sci-fi is supposed to represent hope. Well, and uh, where uh, humanity. Star, Star should... Trek. Star Trek specifically. Yeah. Is yeah, an exactly. optimistic show. It's a utopian show. In a in in our current world now, which is uh, oversaturated with dystopian shows. That's right. And they like Discovery and Picard. They turned it into a dystopian show because yeah. they don't like or understand it. So fingers crossed for the Orville season three. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know that's going to be good at least. Yeah, I reckon it'll be good. I hope so. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sure we talked about this. Hulu is supposed to come out. Here in the next couple of years, right? In this uh, well, uh... Whether it do- whether whether it does or not is different. Yeah, but it's yeah. supposed to apparently. Yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed. So I mean, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I just I thought I'd get that out of my system because I did that... say I'd, I'd get back to the listeners. That's a real my, that's uh, a real bummer, James. Yeah, no, I, I you know, it's I I, sh- I shouldn't have got. I shouldn't have got my hopes up, even if I, even though I was really, you know, reserved about it. 
Uh, like, wary. you know, people I, people I respect, who I follow on Twitter, yeah. uh, said the most positive things about it. Yeah, but a lot of people I respect said Last Jedi was the best Star Wars movie. Yeah, and a lot of people have come yeah. out and said, actually, there it was that was wrong. <laughs> well, th- that as well. But, you know, it, it's, a thing, it's a thing we see a lot. And yeah. we talk, we've talked... We ba- it's bandwagoning. Yeah, it's bandwagoning. And it's also people misunderstanding what this franchise is and should is, be yeah. and and where it could have gone yeah um, and thinking thinking they're smart because they like something that's not what it should be yeah it's like that um uh, what was the quote from Zack Snyder about Batman uh oh, yeah. is it um he shoots people uh well I can't remember like, the quote yeah he kills but... people if you don't think so get over it you're a yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, something it's like it's that. like yeah. that reaction kind of people, to, yeah, to, people, to pop culture. Yeah, and and then and that's the thing. People like him who don't understand the superheroes, who don't like, don't even like the superhero. I mean, yeah. he loves Batman, but he loves Batman for the wrong reason. Yeah, but you know, he definitely he didn't like Superman. You can tell that. So, but people like him are the ones who get to make. Yeah, movies yeah. and shows. I think it's like it's it's this idea that it's like, well, if Star Trek was in real life, Star Trek would be gritty. Well, that's you know what I mean. Thing. But that that's what <laughs> but that's what they did with Picard, and that's what's yeah. so disappointing is they that they went, oh well, you know, actually, it's it's a show about you know what's happening now politically, so we're going to have to make it a, like now. And, yeah. But it's like no, Star Trek is about a world where we've moved it's, on from talk- that exactly. We've yeah. had we've had our Trumps, we've had our Hitlers, we've had our COVID pr- uh, disasters, we've had our World War Three. Star yeah. Trek takes place. Pe- people are stupid. Star Trek takes place after World War Three. Yeah. yeah. You know, like it, they had to. The world had to self destruct before we we built back up as the utopia that Gene Roddenberry presented. Yeah, that's right. So, so for Picard and Discovery and and stuff like that to to say, oh no, it's all shit again. You you're missing the point. Yeah. yeah. You're, so why you're... so why are you making the show? You're making the show for money. You're making the show because it's a well recognized brand. Yeah, it's just brand. It's just making yeah. money off of off a, off a brand. That's and all the, it is. And the writers think they're real smarty pants by subverting expectations and yeah. you know and and being um you know like they think they're being smart, but they're not. They're a bunch of dummies. Yeah, I mean that as, as childish as that sounds, it's on the money. Um, yeah. it's a, we all know, you all know that person who thought they were really smart when in reality they just know some big words. Um, yeah. it's like that, it's like that in a nutshell for an entire industry. Yeah. It's like some people went to art and, school, so they yeah. think they know what people want, and, but in reality, all they do is ruin existing franchises. And it's also, we've talked okay. about, it's, it's a, it's a, it's an industry where you're not really allowed to talk shit about other people in the industry. And so even if someone does something really bad, like J.J. Abrams does with Rise of Skywalker, no one's going to tell J.J. Abrams, you really fucked up, you can't, you know, you can't do that again. Yeah, no, that's he's, right. Because he's a nice guy and he plays, he, he has a producer, he has a lot of projects going, you know. He yeah, he's a, a member of the, he's a member of the Crit Guilds and so on. Yeah, exactly. There's a, it's a lot of Hollywood clout. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, like... I think, and the the people who do stand up and say, "Hey, this is bullshit," those are the people who don't get to work in the industry. Yeah, or, they don't make it in Hollywood. Or or who who are stuck to doing their smaller projects and never really breaking out because no one they're difficult to work with, quote unquote. Yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. whereas I'm you know I'm saying fuck that. People should come out and say, you know what, fuck Alex Kersman, fuck J J Abrams. Fuck Akiva Goldsman. Fuck all the people. Fuck Kathleen Kennedy. Fuck Ryan. Oh, especially Kathleen Kennedy. Fuck yeah. Fuck all the people. Fuck all the executives and writers and producers of the new Star Wars and new Star yeah. Trek because they're the ones that fucked it up. And then yeah, they're they- only interested in 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 the financial end of things. Yeah. What what they think will sell the most or yeah. get the or, most bumps yeah. in seats. And or feeling superior because they're yeah. shitting all over a f- popular franchise. Yeah, that's you know? right. So anyway, uh, sorry about the rant, everyone. But that's no, why, it was necessary. That's why you. It's necessary, and that's why you subscribe to us for our spicy hot takes. There's always something to win. Hey, <laughs> we haven't had an episode in a while, all right? It builds up in the system. Yeah, yeah. We, we used to do this once a week. Now we do it like once a month, and you have to. It builds up. And you have to put up with it. Yeah. And the, the problem is they don't stop making terrible content to complain yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. And it's, <laughs> it's like I always say: every time we say something sucks. Hollywood double down, doubles down on it. Yeah. 
So I'm sure next week they'll announce something of so, like something terrible that we just talked about on this show. Snyder Cut V V2.0 or something. Yeah. You know. Uh, I can't wait for the um the secret uh, Last Jedi Ryan Johnson cut. Oh yeah. They thought it was too edgy well, for audiences. I, remember we talked about on the Rise of Skywalker review where it's like the Abrams cut. <laughs> he, he had an original version. It's like people were like release the Abrams cut. You That'd know? be hilarious. And then and then they, everyone came out and was like, no, that's not a thing. And they were like, shut up, release it. <laughs> yeah, it's Babu Frick for two hours. Oh, man. That, hey, man, that, that can't be worse than what we got. Nah, it'll be all right. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I think that's enough. You guys want to mention anything else? Nah, we good. Yeah. Um. Uh. Well, I mean, I think it's a good, uh, using Binge, uh, to go back to Binge, uh, it's a good time if people haven't been able to see things like um, The Outsider, um, Mr. Mercedes, and stuff like that. Because like oh. some of the dramas that we couldn't look, really access, look, look, uh, if, that's pretty cool. If you've never watched The Wire, it's the greatest show ever made. Watch it. That's, um, that's also, all I'll say about that. You know, if I could tell anybody, I think that I'd really love it if lots of people could just watch Carnival all the time. That's a great show. Uh, you know, hopefully get See, some that, interest going in Carnival. That's a show where if it was made today, it would probably last a lot longer. But yeah. beca- because it was made in the early days of the premium cable shows, after two seasons when it wasn't doing so well, they're like, they got cancelled. And we never got a resolution, which I've always been sad about. But if it was made today, it would, people would be going nuts for that shit. they will be like, you know, there'll be memes and stuff. Um, and, you know, it would be up to season five or whatever. Um, you know, I will say um, uh, one. There is one bit of news which we didn't really talk about. Mm. The Sandman uh, is being adapted not for television, but for Audible uh, as a type of well, radio play. Well, we did talk about that's coming to Netflix. No, no, no. Eventually. It's beca- it's an it's an or it's an audio play. No, no, no. But remember, uh, like quite a while yeah. ago now, maybe a year, they announced that Neil Gaiman was working on a Netflix TV adaptation. Yeah. So I don't know if that's still going ahead. So it, it is. It is. It is. It the, is. It yeah. is. But the the, okay. audi- the audible thing, yeah, that is still kind of interesting. No, that, that's just... that's not unusual. They do that all the time. Yeah, but it's no, but I mean, for a comic book, uh, they've had. I'm, I don't know if they've adapted comic books before, but I know they've had comic book uh, audio content. They had a Wolverine podcast, I know. Oh, that's uh, pretty cool. Uh, uh, audio. But I'm kind of wondering uh, how what form that's going to take. I think that'll be interesting to follow. Um, if, if it if it's if it's like they the 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 never wear a radio play with um, uh, James McAvoy was really good. So if they can get a cast. Uh, oh no, the cast is stacked. Oh, they um, announced the cast. Yeah. Uh, let me. Um. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Um. It's what well, it's narrated by Gaiman himself. Uh. Mm-hmm. For as a start, but it's um the primary cast is uh narration by Dirk Mags and Neil Gaiman, mm-hmm. and then the characters are um I'm assuming this is for the first season. I I'm not exact. I'm sure it'll change because my understanding is. Uh, it's like every episode narrated and and voice acted every um, every volume. issue every, every issue, issue I should say. Uh, so it's got Riz Ahmed, Kat Dennings, Taron Egerton, Neil Gaiman, uh, James McAvoy, Samantha Morton, Babe Newith, Andy Serkis, and Michael Sheen. Not bad. Um, and I'm assuming that there's going to be a varied cast as uh, the story goes on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's the first installment of a multi-part series, so I'm assuming it's volume one through to like twelve yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um. So that that's something interesting to keep a look at. Yeah. Uh, because cool. you know sometimes we talk about comics briefly on the show, mm. uh, but I think this is another way to get people interested into comics if you weren't interested before, because I think podcasts well, are becoming really popular now. Well, even yeah. our parents, even our parents are talking about their favorite podcasts, and they've recently got into that whole craze. Yeah, I think uh, they can stay away from this show. Audio, but, uh, audio books, audio books are um, probably a good gateway for people who like don't have time to read or aren't really into reading. Yeah, and especially like it'd be great if this gets popular and it brings more people into like the Sandman universe, you know? Yeah, uh, I mean, so that's that'd be really cool. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, yeah, that's about it. That's all the news I've got. Oh, uh, um, we'll wrap it up. 
yeah so thanks for listening everyone we really do appreciate it um we're kind of we're grateful that you continue to support us even in this time where we're uncertain of what we're doing with the show and how long that's right we'll ha- you know the the infrequent uh, uploads and you know we're not sure exactly when we'll be back but um yeah i hope you hope you enjoyed this episode and We'll, we'll come back in the next few weeks or next month or so, and maybe we'll do a big review of something. Um, yeah, definitely for Dark, um, oh, at yeah. least. Yeah, in a few months we'll come um, back for that as well. Um, yeah, and, and also the technological side of things is constantly changing. So we're using this program at the moment now, but that might change as well, and our, yeah. our equipment might change. So there's always... Uh, different things and we're not sure if we're going to be getting back to the studio anytime soon so uh bear with us in this kind of weird this uh, complicated time this, this complicated time we're having um yeah thanks everyone and adios cousins <laughs>